And I don't care if you've been diagnosed with ADD or any other type of learning disability. The Bible says that God will give wisdom to all men liberally. Amen. And you just got to ask and you ask in faith. Amen. And don't think you've got something, well, I don't know if God... Well, yeah, you waver, then God's not going to give it to you. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, to flip over to James chapter 4, it's also important when we're praying to pray for the right things. As I mentioned earlier, God's not just going to give you everything. That, that statement in Matthew 7, asking shall be given to you, was not containing just every possible thing under the sun, no matter what it is. So you said, well, I asked God for a million dollars and I totally believe he could do it, <laughs> right? I mean, I just, I just asked. He says, ask, you shall receive. So what's up, God? How come I don't just have a million dollars sitting right in front of me right now? Look, that, that's, not how, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. And we could, we could see from the scripture, I mean, a theme, a common theme of the scripture from beginning to end is not to be caught up in the cares of this world and the, the, the financial riches and wealth and the things of this world because we're not of this world. So we're not supposed to be living for those things and setting our heart on the things of the world because the things of the world are not of the Father. And we're not supposed to be covetous, so we're not supposed to be desiring those types of things that we don't have and setting our heart on, on the money and being greedy over stuff. So God's not going to be a partner to you just being sinful. James chapter 4, verse number 1 reads this, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. So first he's saying, look, you're not even asking for the things. You're fighting and warring over stuff, and you didn't even ask God. But then he says this, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your lusts. He's saying, you know, first of all, you got to ask. Second of all, though, you're asking, you got to ask for the right thing. Because if you're asking about these things, you just want to consume it on your lusts. He's saying he's not going to give you that either. Ask for something good. Ask for something holy. Ask for something righteous. Ask for something that's going to be according to God's will. That's how you're going to get your prayers answered. And before you start getting all huffy going, well, oh, man, I thought I said I could just ask for anything. And, you know, like, why do I have to ask for things according to God's will? Why wouldn't you want to ask for things according to God's will? Yeah, right. I mean, really take, take a thought on that. If you're asking for things that are not according to God's will, how in the world is that going to be good for you? Amen. I mean, your own self-preservation, don't you want what's good for you? Amen. Like, ultimately? And maybe you need to grow up spiritually a little bit, but it's kind of like the kids that don't want to eat their broccoli or their vegetables. I don't like the way it tastes. I don't want to have any of that. Why do parents make the kids eat their vegetables? Or at least why does it happen in my house? I can tell you that because maybe it doesn't happen everywhere. I make them eat their vegetables because it's good for them because they need it for their health because it's something that they need to, to just be healthy and they can't just live off of, you know, whatever. I don't know, ice cream, sugar, candy, whatever they would choose to have. No, you're going to eat what I give you, but you have to eat these things because it's good for you. It's in your best interest. And yeah, sometimes the things that are really in your best interest aren't the most fun or the most pleasing to the flesh even. It may not be, right? But the spiritual things, the good things, the things that truly are good for you, the things that truly will bring peace and joy in your life aren't necessarily going to be the most exciting things in the world. 